I love it when a plan comes together. I'm booked with Kantar from Sydney through to Doha in business class, but when I went to check in online yesterday, I discovered there was the option to do a cheeky little upgrade to first class, and uh, I took it. So this flight is now gonna see me on their iconic A380, the only aircraft in the Qatar fleet that uh, has first class, flying in first class from uh, Sydney through to Doha, 14 and a half hours, it is going to be brilliant. Join me, let's do it together, let's go. I managed to get through security just in time to catch a glimpse of tonight's ride, basking in the beautiful Sydney sunset. There's the crew just walking to the aircraft now. To say I'm excited about this one is an understatement. I'm really, really looking forward to this flight. Part of the reason is, is that this is so elusive. There's only one aircraft type in the entire Qatar fleet that has first class, and that's the A380. They've only got 10 in their fleet, and they only fly into a few cities. So uh, it's not very common. Uh, so that's one of the reasons. And secondly, it's the one seat within the whole Qatar network that I haven't tried yet. I've tried their economy class and their business in their various different styles, narrow body and wide body. Um, they have got, in my opinion, the best business class in the sky, in the Q suite. Even their normal business class is really, really good. So do they need a first class? Well, that's the question. And uh, I'll answer that at the end of this flight. So stick around and uh, we'll uh, answer that question at the end of the video. Now, Qatar is a one world airline, as is Qantas, so you'd uh, naturally expect that uh, I'd have access and that Qatar would be using the Qantas lounges here at Sydney Airport. Alas, that's not the case. The relationship between these two airlines has been pretty fractured in recent times. It's uh, not in a good spot, and I don't think it's improving anytime soon. As a result, I believe that's the reason why uh, Qatar is using the uh, Air New Zealand lounge here instead. Or it could be the fact that this is the closest lounge to the gate. I don't know, I suspect that it's probably the former. Anyway, let's go into the lounge, grab a coffee, and uh, relax before my flight. The Air New Zealand lounge is a nice one, with plenty of seating, a full bar, good food options, and great coffee. That's it, it's time to fly. Thank you very much, it was lovely. Let's go. As I boarded, I was shown to my seat, 1A, right at the very front of the upper deck. But before I show you my seat, I want to just quickly show you the business class cabin as a comparison. I'd asked to board a little bit early so that I could film this cabin before it filled up with passengers. The A380 features a slightly older Qatar business class seat, rather than their flagship Q Suite product. That said, this is still an excellent seat, with each passenger having direct aisle access. For those wondering the cost to upgrade from these business class seats to first class on this 14 hour flight, well the cost was 1994 Australian dollars. At today's exchange rate that works out at about 1360 American dollars or 1270 euros. So what do you get for the extra money? Space. And of course enhanced service, food and wine, but more on that later. There are just two rows in first class with a total of eight seats. The cabin is an open design, with the best seats for couples being those in the middle. That said, a privacy screen can be raised if your partner is killing your vibe. Cheers. Here's to what I know will be one sensational flight.
As we take to the skies, now's a good time to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now that we're up in the air, let's have a closer look at this Qatar first class seat. As I mentioned earlier, what you get is lots of space. The seat itself is like a big wide comfy armchair that is endlessly adjustable. Opposite you is an ottoman where you can have a guest join you for your meals and above that a large widescreen TV. Behind the TV screen you have your own hang up closet. On one side the armrest contains your sweet control panel which allows you to adjust the seat and lighting. This is also where you find your noise cancelling headphones and a USB power point. Another full universal power point is located next to the TV screen. Your other armrest contains the entertainment system remote. Next to this is another little cubby hole for literature and the menus. As expected, the tray table is big enough for two and, if you're so inclined, it makes a great workspace. In addition to the large privacy screen between the middle seats, each seat also has an additional privacy screen on the aisle side. Let's start this flight off properly. We're in the air. It's time for a 19-year-old single malt. It's a Glen Meringue. Uh, cheers. Oh, that's a good drop. That's a lovely drop. Served with my favourite warm roasted nuts. This is going to be a good flight. Heading to the bar after this. Whilst enjoying my single malt, I checked out the menus for today's flight. I show them in full at the end of the video. Just like Qatar Business Class, dining in first class is on demand, which means that rather than eating at set meal times, you can eat anything you like from any menu whenever it suits you. This is perfect for long haul travellers and is one of the reasons I really like Qatar Airways. So rather than have dinner straight away, I thought I'd head to the bar for a drink. This is another one of the benefits of the A380 the bar at the back of the business class section. It's a beautifully designed space and the friendly Qatar staff are only too happy to whip up a cocktail or two. What I love most about traveling is meeting new people and hearing about their lives and travels. And as often happens on these occasions, one drink turned into several and new friendships were quickly formed. Eventually though, it was time for dinner, which in first class is an event. The full menus are at the end of the video. To accompany my dinner, I went with the 2014 Ara Shiraz from Two Hands in the Brossa Valley in South Australia. If you can get your hands on it, it retails for about $200 a bottle. It's a stunning drop. A small appetizer set the scene for what was about to come. First up was caviar served with chilled vodka. I follow this up with an old favorite, Arabic Messer. For mains, I went with a lobster thermidor. It, like the rest of the meal, was beautiful. Every dish was excellent, but at this stage, I had to admit defeat. Dessert would have to wait until the morning. Normally at this stage of the video, I would show you the unpacking of the amenities kit, but for some reason, I completely forgot to film it. So here it is a few weeks later with what I have left. It was stocked with all the usual potions, lotions, socks and eye masks, etc. The kit itself was a very handy bag with a shoulder strap, especially themed for the FIFA World Cup. Ample supplies of further amenities were provided in the bathroom. Whilst I'm here, let me give you a quick tour. Sadly, the Qatar A380s don't feature the showers of Emirates, but these first class bathrooms are still huge. Now is also a good time to show you the Qatar's in-flight PJs. Again, they've been specifically designed for the FIFA World Cup. Whilst I was getting changed, the wonderful crew were converting my seat into a luxurious bed. 
Yes, it was as comfortable as it looked and I was out like a light. After about six hours of solid sleep, I slowly woke up with some Earl Grey tea with a slice of lemon. Soon after this, it was time for breakfast and again, Katar's dining on demand concept worked a treat. To tell you the truth, I was feeling a little hungover. So rather than the normal breakfast offerings, I mixed things up a little. The way I was feeling, I needed comfort food. First up, I ordered the fresh berries with rose water syrup from the dessert list of the dinner menu. I followed this up with some granola and Greek yogurt from the breakfast menu. Then it was time for real comfort food. During the World Cup, Qatar were offering a range of special game time snacks. These included nachos. How could I possibly resist nachos in first class? I then finished the whole meal off with a double espresso and some Swiss chocolates. Before we land, let me just show you the Qatar RX1 in-flight entertainment system, which I was enjoying during my breakfast feast. It's the same system throughout the aircraft, but obviously in first class, the experience is enhanced by the huge screen and high quality noise cancelling headphones. The system itself was easy to use and had plenty of viewing, listening and gaming choices. I settled in to watch a few episodes from the BBC featuring the highlights of Glastonbury 22. My sons were lucky enough to be there and they absolutely loved it. This aircraft was Wi-Fi enabled and first class passengers are provided free codes. However, I didn't use it, preferring to be in the moment shut off from the outside world. Before long though, we were starting our descent into Doha and my first class dream was almost over. It had been an incredible flight and I'm so grateful to have had this experience. Our 4.30 a.m. arrival meant that the views out the window weren't great. However, the external cameras on the A380 gave us the most incredible view of our landing. Well, that was one fantastic, fantastic flight. Thank you so much. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, incredible experience. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Good morning. How are you? Yes. Welcome to Doha. Thank you. I've got a welcoming party. This is cool. Off the aircraft and uh, straight onto a buggy and uh, being whisked through to arrivals. Um, do I think there's a place for uh, first class and uh, is business class replacing it? Well, business class at Qatar is fantastic, but I can tell you there is quite a significant step still between uh, business class and first class. So uh, the answer is a resounding yes. I uh, hope that uh, first class, uh, for those lucky enough to be able to do it, uh, stays around. Look, thanks for watching. If you uh, enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and um, check out my channel where there's a whole lot of other flight reviews and more on the way and lots of stuff happening. If you like subscribing to that sort of thing, you should. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy travels. Now, as promised, here are the full menus for this flight. 